And today, this originally started with a challenge from an email marketing um, course that I was in, and she challenged us to come up with a project to do for February, and I was going to, am doing, love your Word, WordPress website. So give your web, you, are you giving your WordPress website enough love? Well, with the whole um, war thing going on and the issues with um, cybersecurity, it's up the vigilance that we really need to keep. And people wonder why with our small business websites do we need to worry? Well, the hackers are bots, they're out there and they are persistent. And it's just something that we need to do. Every time WordPress makes a change on their um, end with the core, hackers go after the holes that were left, the security holes, and any of the WordPress um, plugins that you're using. If they're not updated, the hackers go after those plugins as well. Dozens of bots hacking attempts daily. Yes, definitely. And um, I would just I would show an example on mine too. They're coming from all over the place. So that's the main reason why I wanted to do this is there are some easy things that we as website owners can do on our own that won't harm or break our website. And it just takes a little bit of courage for those who do not have that techie hat that they want to wear to do it. So um, let's just get started. So I'm Terry Loving. I've done WordPress websites for quite some time now. My main part, focus on my business is to manage my clients' WordPress websites. Um, they get busy, you have clients, you have things to do, you don't have time to do it. And I try, I my bed. <laughs> my business does it on a weekly basis i go in and i check and i've got email set up so that i'm notified if your site's down if you need help if there's a big um, security issue going on and wordpress needs to fix it if there's plugins that have been affected so i do that management piece and i worry about it for you to so you don't have to worry about it on your own so that's what i do <clears throat> and i'm i started out I've been told not to call myself a dinosaur, but I've been <laughs> started out a long time ago doing HTML worksite, websites, and I switched to WordPress just because so many people use it, and I, you can only keep up on one piece of technology, or I found I wanted to only keep up on one big piece of technology at a time. There were too many ways to spread myself all over the place. So what you're going to learn today are just some basics. I'm going to go through the core updates, why you need to update your core on your WordPress. I'm going to go through some plugins that are useful and how to update your plugins and just some key cybersecurity pieces of information that are real handy and that you could pass on to any of your VAs or assistants that are helping you also with your websites. So let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen. The most important thing we're going to talk about today is, um, oops, this should share, is to make sure that you are. Okay, I didn't put the right. Okay, let's see if this. Let me stop share for a second. <laughs> make sure that you are backing up your website before you make any changes. Always back it up, because it's key and important. If um, any of the plugins are not working well with each other that you've got it backed up so let me make sure i've got the right screen here that i want to share okay we're going to start with logging in your website the key thing with logging in your website that i find is key and important is not to use the word admin here when WordPress doesn't install, they typically put the word admin there, and that's the first thing that a bot will do. And then the only thing they have to do is guess your plugins, I mean, your passwords. So use something else. I highly recommend something that's not guessable, but something that you'll remember. And possibly even just an email address is a really key and safe way to do it. So I'm going to log into my, this is my personal website. And I'm going to show you some of my back end things here on the dashboard that work for me and help. Now, because I am managing WordPress websites, I have extra plugins that you do not need to have. So this is the main piece here. The plugins form that tells you 
Well, let's just before I even get into those, I want to show you this is I recommend WordFence as your security piece because it'll do an update, it'll keep you alerted as to what changes you need to do. It's got a wonderful dashboard to it. It's free. You can buy the pro or the premium. So now it, it has scanned my website and found issues, updates and issues. Let's look at what the issues are. Okay, it's telling me that the Acuity online appointment scheduler that I have on here, it has no longer been supported by WordPress. I need to get that all my appointments scheduled through a different means. And I have that uh, calendar and I'm going to have to do that. All in one WordPress migration needs an update. And the theme, my theme, which I'm not using, needs an update. If you're not using a theme, a good idea is to just remove it and keep the themes that you are using and update those. So let's go back up here. It's only showing one plugin that needs updating. But I wanted to show you the security piece. You can keep the security and know which bots are um, attacking you or attempting to get logged in. Now, why would they attack you? Why would they log in? There's lots of different reasons. And for the smaller businesses, some of it is just using your hosting energy. Um, the uh, I don't use cyber, what are they called? The coins, the bitcoins, but those use an awful lot of energy to mine. And some hackers are used, trying to find ways to input files onto your account that will lose the energy of your account, your hosting service. So you don't want them in there. So this WordFence plugin has lots of tools, lots of ways, lots of ways to set it up and protect you. Let's look at the login security piece. Okay, this is to, you can create a, a code with two um, <laughs> where you have to scan or enter the key to get in, it would, would give another layer of security. You can look at the settings. All these settings enable you to secure your site even tighter. Now, again, this is the free version. I have not paid for this. You can add these pieces of security to your site that really do help. Now, uh, I wanted to show you, let's not bringing that up right now. I want to show you how where the hackers are coming in. Role, total users, active, inactive. No, that's not what I want. Editor. Okay, we may have to come back to that because it'll come up. I can run a CAPTCHA to keep those bots. Bots cannot do CAPTCHAs, so CAPTCHAs are a good thing to have. Maybe it's tools. I don't want to waste a lot of time in here because it's something that you can explore yourself. Okay, here's one. So I've selected some of these security issues. These are think places, locations from where bots and people have attempted to log in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So look at this. A stream of them came. Now this has got to be a bot because of the time elements. They're just it's just pursuing me right away. But from the Bahamas, and they're trying all these different files. And there's no way I personally could have figured out that they're going to try all these different files. But this bot is set up to do just that. And that is crazy. So I've blocked that bot. There's a way to put an IP address in and block that. So it gives you the time, the IP address. And this IP address is what you can copy and paste in to block a bot. Port Orchard is me. Taiwan is not me. And if it was showing previous ones from previous, there we go. Turkey. Russia, has Kazakhstan. I don't know anybody in these places, Russia. So these bots are either, they're either bots or people or um, the, 
the no gooders that are doing it um, currently from the Russian attack. And that has that high, security is heightened right now. It's not only attacking us, it's attacking the big guys. So they're trying all kinds of ways to access. And these are all WordPress logins. So they're not doing individual sites. That one in the Bahamas, I'm going to have to really double check after I get off the call. Okay, so this is one good reason to keep your site updated. You don't want these guys in there. Plugins. Look at look. Let's look at the plugins. Now, if you wanted to download WordFence, if you don't have it or you don't have a security plugin, you would add new. And I'm not going to back up my account right now, um, my website right now, because it does take a little bit of time. But I would do, I've got the Zoom issues in front of me here. Okay, so you would, you can um, add plugins or upload plugins. So you do it on this part of the site. And it gives you a, all the ones that WordPress supports what I would recommend is looking at the number of downloads. You want ones with higher down and active installations and when it was last updated. So you want to keep your plugins current. You want to know that the people are still actively updating them. There are lots. Of, let me let somebody else in here. Hold on for a sec. Oops. Uh, <laughs> ah, Sherry, there we go. We'll do that. Okay, I've got to find out how to let. There we go. There we go. One more person coming in, and <laughs> welcome, Katie. Okay, I'm going to resume the sharing. All right, got to know my Zoom better than I do. <laughs> So that's where you would add a new plugin. If you don't have WordFence, this will be a place to do it, and I highly recommend it. So I'm going to go back to the general plugins. I just updated my site or backed up my site yesterday, so I'm not going to back it up again. But what I will show you is my favorite backup, because I create websites, WordPress websites for others as well. My favorite one is this one, and it's free, all-in-one WordPress migration. And what it does is it backs up your entire site, database and all. So if I'm doing it on a dummy website, a dummy domain, I can then back it up and transfer that to that person's domain name. So what this does is allow me to, if I've, anything is not playing well together as I update my plugins, or I update my, update my WordPress core, this, web, this plugin allows me to migrate the entire site and reinstall it. Now, you'll notice I haven't activated this one because it does not play with my Beaver Builder theme that I've got this website built on. So I will activate it when it's time to back up my site and deactivate it when it's not time to update my site but I'm going to go ahead and update it right now. So let me show you on another person's website. Now that was the only one, it said it had another one. I'm going to have to come back to my own personal website here and take care of the calendar piece that's not playing well with WordPress anymore. And it may be just because they haven't updated it recently, but I want to make sure that I trust my updates to be working well on my account. Because if there are any loopholes on those plugins, hackers can get in. Now I'm going to move to another website here and just show you. This is one that has not been updated in quite some time. That's the one, where'd she go? No, oh, this one. Okay. I, are you still seeing my screen? Okay. 
So you've noticed this one has not been updated in quite some time. It, it's got additional. My comment here is I am managing this site, but she has not paid for it recently, so I have not managed it currently. Let's do it right now. The um, all-in-one WordPress migration. You, I like to export it. What it does, come on, baby, here we go. Okay, what it does, you can pay for all of these other options. I haven't paid for them. If you have them already, that you can save them out on the Google Cloud. You can save them elsewhere. I save it to a file because it goes directly to my computer. It also saves it on the hosting service. So I do have to watch and make careful, um, be careful that I don't overload the hosting service with this. I can delete the older ones and just keep the newer ones. Now I'm not going to while we're watching, <laughs> waiting for this one, we're going to see that it takes some time and it depends because Zoom's operating, it may take me longer. Let me go to another one here that is currently, I just recently backed this one up. So again, the red dots are showing me I've got updates. Word Fence is showing me I've got some security issues and there are my plugins. Now plugins, like I just explained on my own website, sometimes have conflicts and they will make it so your website doesn't work. So you can deactivate them and activate them. I'm going to update WordPress migration. And again, I've just recently backed this one up so I could demonstrate to you, just updating plugins is really, really easy. But I wanna make sure as I update them, that the website is still operating as it's supposed to be. So I'm going to open this website and take a look. And it is. But you might want to check if you have many plugins to update. Every so often, double check to make sure your website is still showing up as you want it to show up. Let's go back to the dashboard. I'm talking awfully fast. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to pause here for a second and get some, any questions that you might be having. Any questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself. That will be work, work just fine. I see there's a chat. Terry, yes. I use iTheme security. Uh, word fence always conflicted with what I was doing. Uh, is there a particular reason you prefer word fence over, say, iThemes, or is it just that you've been satisfied with it and so stuck with it? I'm satisfied with it and have stuck with it because it what you can set it up to email you when an issue occurs, when yeah. a site is down, when um, a plugin needs updating or when WordPress has come out with a new core. So it always notifies you. Um, so, that, does my, so does so uh, does iThemes security. Okay, so it's a personal preference. Right. All right, and I had okay. it recommended to me early on and it's just served me well. Okay. Now let's see, not seeing your screen, uh oh. No, Kat, are you seeing my screen now? There it is. <laughs> okay. Do you rec recommend intentionally block specific IP addresses or just WordFence do it automatically? I like to block specific IP addresses if they are persistent. Um, it just makes, then I don't worry about it because you can set it so that they can only access the login five times, before, you know, with a wrong um, password or lo wrong login, but it just feels more secure if you block the IP address and you know, they're bots. I, I don't have people in, I don't have members or, um, clients in the Ukraine. I don't have members or clients in London, <laughs> you know, I mean, or the or Russia, or whatever. So those you, blocking those, I feel safer. So does that answer your question, Dean? Okay. So, so 
let's do back to plugins. With the WordPress core, you will find that some people hesitate to update WordPress when it first comes out with a new edition. I sometimes, it depends, I will follow WordPress. I will watch WordPress because if it's a key security issue, I tend to do it right away, but I always do a backup first because you can move back to the previous edition. WordPress security, there are enough people out there, the no good doers, <laughs> that watch the updates, watch the security issues, that want to get into your website. So uh, it's just one of those things that you want to keep it updated. Okay, so Elementor Pro is an add-on that I use for block building, and I'm just going to update that. You can see I have many plugins in here. The fewer plugins you have, the faster your website will run, or that's what they tell me. There are some um, plugins that really slow things down. Optin Monster is one of my favorite ones just because you, it provides the pop-ups, but it can be expensive. Let's see here now. Okay. I was going to show you also Oh, this plugin, Wicked Folders. If you are an organized person, it's a handy one to have because you can organize, especially if you have many different pages or you have lots of interest, you get off on different topics, your blogs can be organized. It allows you to organize things into folders. Now, I have not done it successfully. I think Kat is a far better organizer than I. <laughs> I just kind of get it done, but I like having it. Aha, uh -huh. Kat says she loves Wicked Folders. Thank you, Kat. All right, so um, let's see. I was going to look at my list here. Oh, it, let's go back to my original comment with, if you are using admin as your login password, I'm, you're probably, the three that are on here right now are probably wise enough that you're not. But let's go in and look at users because this is a key thing that you want to make sure that you have updated if you have admin. What I would recommend is that you do another user, create a new one. If say if this one were saying admin and I wanted to delete it, create a new one first, save it, and then go in and delete the admin one. The admin one is just it gives the bots a free access to one of the pieces of information that they need to log into your account. Passwords can be guessed. The bots, um, even 16 digit, 16 letters, it, the longer the better, but the random, more random, the better. Um, we used to, way back when, use many, the same WordPress excuse me, the same password for many of our sites, I highly recommend that you, you, as troublesome as it is, get a keyword or a password organizer and randomly do your passwords. Let's keep those bots on their toes. Analytics plugins. Let me see which one I'm using. That's a great question, Jean. I, I believe I've been doing the, the Google Kit one on one of my websites, but I don't see it here. Analytics is one of my weak points. It's taken me a while to get used to doing my numbers. Is anyone else on the call um, good on with their analytics? Kat, how are you on your analytics? I look at them and kind of ignore them. <laughs> I don't, uh, I, um, my business is such as that I follow CEO and I implement it kind of organically and to the best of my knowledge, but it's not a big focus because I don't drive 
directly drive a lot of things to my website. I don't, I don't expect to come up in searches unless somebody's searching specifically for something I have or by my name, and then I come up anyway. Um, my business comes from other places, so that's where I put my focus. Okay. No, that makes sense. Me too. Um, there, it's just the one that keeps popping up and reminding me I've got good things on my website. There's usually a report here. Insights. Insights will give me reports. And it does, it refreshes the reports and then throws me, and these are monster insights. So I don't know, I don't know if it's a paid, I, this is the free version. I have not paid, I take that back. I paid for Optin Monster and I think it comes with Optin Monster. Optin Monster is a, um, has a free version, but I don't think the monster insights comes with it. So this gives me who's visiting my website, how many sessions have shown up recently, page views, that type of thing, which is helpful. Um, this is the only one that I really use. It also tells me to access what, where they're coming from, Ghana, <laughs> Canada. So these are not the bots. These are perhaps logins or um, page views. Just, they're not trying to log into my account. These are not hackers. And it also tells me the pages that they're looking at most or what, where they came from. So one of my blog posts out there gets a lot of attention. Um, these are the pages. So Facebook is doing well for me. Mighty Marketing Mojo was one of the courses that I was attending. And in that one, the people looked at my website. View all referral resources can give me a deeper in-depth analytics that takes me to my Google Analytics. So I, I have registered there. I am not good with Google Analytics at this point. I set it up and it'll help me analyze my <laughs> analytics in detail, but um, I'm not your expert on that one right now. I have to admit that. So going back to my website. So does that answer your question then, Kate? Okay. I think it was Jean that asked that as well. Okay. So that's not taking me to the right place. I want to get out of Google Analytics and go back to, okay. So as you can see, I have not upgraded to Pro with Insights. I imagine it would give me far more information Okay, so that was my only suggestion at this point for analytics plugins. Cheryl, welcome. I'm glad you're here. So um, let's see, what else was what I going to talk about? I'm not going to talk today about keywords or SEO or any of that kind of thing that would help with your website ranking. I'm not going to talk about website speed other than too many plugins, too many themes will slow your website down. So let's look at the number of themes I have on this one. You find your themes under appearance. It's telling you that one of my themes needs an update. So you can see I, my Beaver Builder is my main theme but I also have the free ones that WordPress provides. And this one is the most current one that came with the most current WordPress update. And I can just update that now. It's not gonna affect anything. It's just gonna keep it current. But you know, I'm really not using these. So I would recommend deleting them because they do carry weight. And to do that, you have to click on it, look at it, and then click delete. So they slow your website down. There we go. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. I've always uh, believed, and it was from early WordPress training, 
that you should keep at least one WordPress website theme that comes with the basic WordPress in case you have to do some uh, investigative work to see, to resolve an issue. And I and think that's really wise. C yeah. yeah. I think that's really wise. So you notice I didn't delete this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do like, I, I keep a backup of my account so I could always go back to the full website using that all-in-one WordPress migration. So I, I do that before I do any updates to secure that I have a full website that I can put right back up. So that is there. But sometimes there are conflicts and you don't know what's causing it. And uh, it does take some research. So I would recommend at least by having a theme that you can easily activate, you're, you're keeping the data, you're keeping the information, and most of it will transfer, but not it's not always, uh, yeah, for real. Usually keep so. one of the simpler design ones that yeah. they have, not necessarily the, their most. Elaborate, current. yes. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so that's where I would update the appearances. Most of them now with, with the new WordPress core things have the, where you can customize them, you can add the widgets, you can add your menus, you can make your website as complicated as possible. <laughs> I tr love to go with simple if I'm going to have my clients want to manage part of it on their own. It's amazing, the block builders have been confusing to so many people and this most recent update went to block builders and excuse me, uh, so much confusion has come from that if you're not comfortable with the WordPress block builders. So going back to one of the old themes help, is helpful because you can then uh, upload your blog posts or your content easy. So again, I'm not going to get into updating contents or anything like that. The main thing was just security issues. So we've dealt with most of the main ones. We've dealt with um, backing up your website. We've talked about, uh, and doing that, my, my favorite backup plugin is the WordPress, all-in-one WordPress, all-in-one WordPress migration. <laughs> Listen to me, get my tongue tied. And then um, we talked about making sure that you back it up and save it securely before you do any updates. The temptation is to go in there and just do them. And I, when there's many to update, there, okay, she's this, I'm gonna download that. Now that's gonna take another, this is a site for those of you joined a little bit late that we were, I was demonstrating the all-in-one WordPress migration. So it's downloading to my, um, my a file on my computer, but it's also downloading to the hosting service where this is hosted. So I will need to go clean that up afterwards because it does use up, well, it's only using up 293 megabytes, but depending on your hosting service, you may not have very much storage on your account. So that's happening there. It's going to take a minute. We can see that it's moving right along there. It's not taking too long. It can take longer when you're running other things. And I was backing it up here before we did any plugin updates. Now this is an account that needs updating currently. We're almost there. I'm gonna just pause for a second here and be sure if you have questions, unmute yourself. I would love to answer your question. Okay, so the file's downloaded. So I can stop that. I can go back into my plugins. Okay, you're behaving slowly. There we go. Okay. Accessibility is a fun plugin to have because now there are laws that make it legal, illegal to not be accessible. So this is a free one that I've got. I have found it has lots of conflicts and it's not necessarily up, kept up. I've recently um, become a partner in a program that will do it differently rather than a WordPress plugin. It actually helps your whole site and all kinds of disabilities make be accessible to your website. They get to 
um, determine what accessibility they need. And uh, I can demonstrate that for you with briefly upon my account. There's all in one WordPress migration. It needs an update. Now, what I warned about is as you're updating to check the website periodically to make sure that it is, so I'll do three and then I'll check my website to make sure that it is updating as it's supposed to without in conflict with anything. So I'll bring it up live. And there she is with her website. And that all seems to be working. And I will check one of the other pages just to make sure. Yes, everything seems to be working fine. Okay, I'm going to go back to the dashboard and complete those updates. So this one, these up here are just helping you look at the things you might want to add <laughs> back to plugins. So all these little red dots are just there to annoy you and tell you it's time to update things. Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. So we'll update that one. That's the report that um, Jean was asking about. How, what do I use for analytics? Hummingbird Pro is a one that smooshes your um, images. So it doesn't they don't take up so much room. I don't like Jetpack. I don't know. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so some, does somebody use it? Yeah, I I just don't. It uses up too much energy. It um, makes takes up too much space. Optimizer, this one needs activating. I haven't used it. Really simple SSL. If your hosting at any point does not cover your SSL, this is a great way to install it. It's easy. It's free. And it provides that HTTPS security that you need on your website. Smart Crawl Pro is one that comes with the management. Smoosh Pro is the one that comes with the management. Snapshot Pro comes with the management. And WordPress Forms Lite is a very well supported WordPress form builder. Now she hasn't activated any of these. So that's what I do when I update a website. Hate jetpack. <laughs> okay, it different experiences, different strokes for different folks. Different things work with your theme. Different things work with what you need, and um, provide those things for you. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing right now and see if there are any additional questions. We have lots more time if people would like me. Do I do the bulk plugin update? Normally, I do not because I've learned that I want to make sure that I don't break somebody's website. So if you fully back, backed up your website and you don't have that many to do, sure, bulk update. Um, and then you can always go back to that backup. But as long as you have a secure backup, um, it should be, you should be just fine. I did a little trick with mine. I use the bulk update most often, unless I'm having trouble or suspect or want, like you going through it and what ones do I want to get rid of? I'm not really using or don't find them valuable. But once it updates, before I leave the update page, I open my site in a new browser tab, check to make sure it's working because if you don't close that page, you can back, you can like revert. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. But you got to know to do that. So yeah, I can Thanks see the advantage to doing yeah. it individually. Thanks for that tip because yes, there are lots of little things that we learn along the way that help. Okay, so um, what else should we look at here? Insights was that one that we looked at with the analytics. What is bugging this one? Oh, that's the SSL needs updating. So I will come back to that and fix that. Okay, so anything else that I've not covered? We covered users, we covered word fence, we covered SSL security. Um, the Accessibility 
is the accessible um, one that I'm now using for my clients. And it is absolutely incredible. It's $49 a month, or you can get it for $490 annually. And what it covers is all the accessible pieces that they can program and on their own. Let me share again, and I'm going to come see. Oh, my website is here. Okay, I'm going to go visit site here. It doesn't bulk up the website, and it doesn't slow it down. But what it does do is pops up. You can make it pop up here. It, it can be small. It can be large. Can you see the little orange man person up here? And you click on that, and they can program. Um, when I was talking to the people that the designers, people with disabilities that want to be on the web know how to access these type of things. They hit tab. You know, their computers are set so that they can access these things. But they can define all these different possibilities. Blind users, ADH friendly profile. And what it does is it caught, caught. Are you kidding me? No, these are magnificent. So you, you can do this on their own. So let's say we wanted to do for a blind one. I, I turn it on my website and it comes up with the access for them. So it be, would begin to speak. They can do keyboard navigation. They can do voice navigation depending on their accessibility on their computer. So it makes you legal. It makes it accessible. And if you have websites that you want others to be able to access and you want to be available to them, this is amazing. So I don't have to have it on all full time. I just have to have the small little person up there access button. And I, having discovered that just makes me so happy. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing again. Anything else while I've got you all here? Any other questions? That's as deep as I'm going to go today. There are other things that can be done, but um, yes, accessibility. And I do have a, um, a partner link for it, uh, an affiliate link for accessibility, and I'll send that to you because it lets you in uh, with a free week or, or trial to see if it's something you want to use. And I can also give you a discount on it. Okay, I'm happy to send the link to all of you. Yes. It's, and it's something to share because people do not realize I've been attending WordPress workshops on how to make your website accessible and it can get really expensive. Legal fees, <laughs> yes, okay. So if there aren't any further questions, I'm going to wrap this up and say thank you for being here with me and I'm gonna stop sharing, stop recording.